trip where you're jet lagged and had to go on another trip. And nine hours out and nine hours back, it was, it was a trip. But, uh, uh, I know some of you are on the edge of your seat, so I'm going to go ahead and kill the suspense. Uh, my dad is my hero. He is, he was, he always will be. Uh, he was a man of God that I love dearly. He's, he's gone on to heaven now to his reward. But he was a, he was a, a great father. That, there, there's no, no man in this world that could have been a greater dad to me than my dad was. But my dad had a hard life. Um, some of his family's here today, and I'm so thankful because this is uh, going to be maybe a shock to you, but it, it's, it's going to be uh, something I hope that you enjoy us about and, and joining us. And, and I'm sure you will because all that that great. But uh, at seven years old, my dad lost his dad to a heart attack. He was the baby of the family. And, uh, it's hard when you start out at 70. I can't imagine. I had my dad for 50 years, and so I never once have, have uh, uh, had any regrets. I just I thank God for the 50 years that I had with my dad, a wonderful dad. And, and I often think that he only had his dad for seven years, and, and it was just bad. At 14 years of age, my dad's brother uh, killed his mother. Uh, he was drunk, had a gun. Nobody really knows the whole story. It was just him and my, my grandmother in the room, and... She was dead. I, I, I wish the story, uh, uh, the, the bad things ended there, but they didn't. Um, my dad um, uh, was very upset. Uh, I talked to my dad about it. and he, he remembers when they brought, back then they used to bring the, the casket to the homes. And uh, just so happened to be the, the home that my mother was living in. It was her grandparents' house. and, and uh, I don't want to get into our family tree. It's too confusing. But, but anyway, uh, uh, some of the ones that are here, their mom and dad lived upstairs, and, and grandma and grandpa lived downstairs. And anyway, long story short, they brought, uh, because uh, uh, his daughter lived upstairs, they brought the, the casket there. Anyway, uh, my dad remembers the police bringing George in handcuffs to the house, and, uh, and uh, he was crying. He was, seemed to be very repentant. He came over to my dad, threw his arms over my dad with his handcuffs on, and and, and uh, told him he loved him and he was sorry. And you know, a lot of times people do things when they're uh, drinking. You wanna you wanna know why I'm so against alcohol? It's because people can't control themselves when they drink. And a bad thing happened. He killed the mother. But he, he told my dad he was sorry, and he, he hated it. And he ended up going to prison for four years. And back then, you know, you get out of prison, they, they would offer you to go into the army and so he went into the Army, and, and uh, long story short, my dad had already gone into the Army because at 14 years of age, he didn't have a mom or a dad, and a few years later, he fibbed. I started to say lied, and I guess I should. It was like he lied about his age, and, and uh, went in the Army. And uh, anyway, he was in the Army, and he was getting ready to go to Korea, and George looked him up, and uh, George told him, you know, again, he was sorry about everything that happened. He wanted to make amends. And um, so, Daddy was fixing to go to Korea, and Mama needed a place to stay, and George had two kids and another one on the way, and they asked my mom to come stay with, with them at Fort Benning, Georgia. At Fort Benning, Georgia, one night in a drunken rage, he raped my mom. And she became pregnant and had a baby. Not right then. <laughs> my dad was in Korea. My mom was, was very upset, um, was threatened uh, by George that he had already killed one lady and wouldn't have a problem killing another one. She was very afraid. She was a young 16-year-old girl. Her husband was far, far away. She went to Washington, D.C. and just decided that she would have this baby because abortion wasn't even in the, in the picture. And I'm so thankful for that. Why am I against abortion? Because of this very reason I'm about to tell you. My dad came home from Korea, went and found her, told her that they could work it out. There's no way that he could father this baby because the man had killed his mother and raped his wife. Imagine being put in that position. Amen. I thank a lot of my dad for being man enough to say, hey, we can work this out. It's not your fault. You're the victim. But I just cannot raise this child. 
So my mom and dad put the baby up for adoption. A year later, I was born in uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. We lived in Clarksville. But for 53 years, 10 months, or, or 3 months and 10 days, 53 years, 3 months and 10 days, my mom has lived in pure agony. She has, even though a bad thing happened to her, this was a part of her. This was a child that she birthed that she never even saw. This was a child that she has prayed for from day one. It's a child that she has thought about every single day. There were a lot of days in my life I didn't understand the depression in my mom's life. I didn't understand what was going on, especially right after Christmas. We'd have this great Christmas, and then mom would go on this week-long depression, and I never did understand it. She told me about it, and um, it was something that her dad just did, he didn't want to talk about. It didn't happen. It didn't exist. Let's not talk about it. There was a lot of guilt and shame on his part. He just didn't feel like it was something that, that should be brought up. My mom told me about it because she was at a place that she just had to tell somebody. I went and talked to my dad, and my dad said no. My mom passed two lie detector tests. They could have thrown George in jail, but my mom cared about the kids that they had, about the wife that loved him, and she didn't do that. My dad wasn't quite as nice. He threatened to kill him and got in a lot of trouble, and... Thank God, uh, God has his own vengeance. Amen. George yeah. went to Vietnam, and he got killed there. Um, he knew how he got killed. It's, it's even more <laughs> surprising. He got his lower extremities blowed off. Um, that's a sad story, but I have a happy ending. Yes. I came back yeah. from uh, Hawaii. We had gotten a letter in the mail. We had been trying ever since my dad died because uh, talking to my dad, he just said, no, let sleeping dogs lie. I don't want, I, no. But when he died, we started looking. And um, Monday, my mom and I went to Clarksville, Tennessee, and we met my sister and my mom's daughter. And uh, I'm excited to say I've got a sister. <laughs> I have never in my life felt the way I feel right now. Uh, I'm like a little kid in a candy store. I didn't know you could love someone that was 53 years old the way that I love my sister Fran. Um, she, um, it's like I've got a new baby sister. You know the love you feel when a new baby comes into the family? It's, it's that way. But what is so cool is we had no problems. She sat down that night and showed my mom a video from the day she was adopted up until uh, she was married and, and, and went through college and all that good stuff. She saw everything. Every prayer that my mama had prayed came true. Even when my mom couldn't see it, even when my mom didn't know it, God was there. Amen. You see, miracles happen in the midst of tragedies. And I'm so Amen. thankful that God, yes. in His amazing grace, saw fit for us to be reunited as a family. I don't know what the coming weeks, months, years hold, but I know it holds this. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yes. There is joy in my mom's life. She is a, a different person. I don't know if y'all been around her the last three weeks, but there is a different joy. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask my mom to stand up and just give a quick testimony. <coughs> quick, because i got a message. <laughs> I just want to thank God so much. I've been so overwhelmed at his goodness because as we sat in Fred's living room, I felt like every prayer that I had prayed, every day I prayed, every, every day. And every prayer that I had prayed, it's like God wrote down line by line and gave it to her amazing parents. And everything that I had hoped for was what her life was like. And that night, she asked me to sit down on her bed and she looked at me and she said, I want to tell you how much I love you. She said, thank you for not having an abortion. Thank you for letting me have the amazing life that I had. She said, no matter how much you love me or couldn't love me, nobody can love me like my mom and dad did. And it just... It was just the most amazing feeling. And ever since that day, I have felt like 
God just took the top off of my head and just poured out everything that was in me. Everything. And I have all this stuff in me. That's just how I feel. Thank God. And I feel so, <laughs> just so different. I can't explain it. There are no words that I know that explain how I feel. Amen. And no words to explain the love that I feel for Fran and my two granddaughters, Robin and Haley. It's just increased my faith to know that I can believe for anything. I pray nobody ever has to wait 53 years and 3 months and 10 days. But if you do, do it because it will definitely be worth it. I just want to praise God for loving me so much that he gave me back what Satan tried to take away and destroy. 